In this video, we're going to learn about the properties of real numbers. So we're going to learn terms such as commutativity, associativity, distributivity, and also talk about how subtraction and division are related to addition and multiplication. So by the end of this video, you should be able to tell whether each of these is equivalent or not, and why using the names of the properties. So post your answers down below, and the solution video will be out in 12 hours at the time of this video is posted. So the properties of real numbers. A lot of these you'll probably find familiar from middle school, elementary school, and you'll just have taken these for granted, but these all have special names. And it's nice to know these names because when you take a look at other uh, types of math, well, not types of math, but things you do in math like set theory or logic, you'll find that these names show up again. And if you know that something is commutative, then you know what that means, regardless of whether you're working with addition, set theory, logic, and so on. So commutativity means that you can switch the order of whatever you're adding or whatever you're multiplying. So this works with addition or multiplication. So for instance, if we have some formula 4x plus 3y, it doesn't matter whether we add 4x plus 3y or if we change the order and we do 3y plus 4x. The result comes out the same. And without variables here, we know that 2 plus 3 is exactly the same thing as 3 plus 2. Both of these are 5. So commutativity, you can think of each number as commuting to the different location. That's how you can think of it. If we have multiplication, like 2y times 4x, again, it doesn't matter if we multiply 2y by 4x first or if we do 4x and then we multiply it by 2y. It doesn't make a difference. So it's the same way that 4 times 2 is the same thing as 2 times 4. Both of those are equal to 8. Now, this is only for addition and multiplication. If we do something like subtraction, for example, let's say 3 times 2, or sorry, 3 minus 2, this is not equivalent to 2 minus 3, because 3 minus 2 is equal to 1, and 2 minus 3 is equal to negative 1. So this is an example that is not commutative. That's commutativity. And with set theory, you'll find if you have A union B, you'll have B union A. So you might not know that yet, but that is another example of commutativity that you will eventually encounter if you continue along with math. Associativity is the second concept that applies to the addition and multiplication operators. And this just means that if you're adding three things together, or if you're multiplying three things together, it doesn't matter which ones you add first. So in the example, I have 3x plus and 2y plus 4 but the brackets are around 2y plus 4, so we're supposed to do this first. But even if we change this to 3x plus 2y first, and then add 4, these are equivalent. It's a lot like if we have 1 plus 2 plus 3, and we do 2 plus 3 first, we get 1 plus 5, and that equals 6. But if we add 1 plus 2 together first, and then we add 3, this is just going to be the same thing as 3 plus 3. And these are both the same thing. They both give us 6 in the end. So the order in which we add these things does not matter. And that's the same for multiplication. So 7m times 3n times 2x. Well, in this case, we have 3n times 2x happening first. But we can switch this. We can do 7m multiplied by 3n. And then we can multiply 2x into it. And this would be the same thing again, like the example we just did with addition. If we do 1 times 2 times 3, where 2 times 3 happens first, that's the same thing as 1 times 6. But if we do 1 times 2 first, and then multiply it by 3, this is the same thing as 2 times 3. And both of these come out to be 6, regardless of uh, which ones you multiply first. But the key here is that all of these operators have to be the same. So you have to be adding 3 things. You have to be multiplying 3 things. If you're doing addition and multiplication at the same time, it's not going to work. So that's called associativity, and it's basically uh, what numbers are associating together first. Now, distributivity, this happens when you have multiple different operators. So this is when you have uh, some number, and then you multiply it by some things being added together. So I want to show this with a numerical example first. Imagine I'm taking 3, and I'm multiplying it by 2 plus 3. Now, if we just follow our regular order and we do everything in the brackets first, 
This is the same thing as 3 times 5, and that gives us 15. But there's another way of looking at this. We can take 3 times 2 plus 3, and instead of adding first, we can multiply each number inside the brackets by 3. So we can do 3 times 2, and then we can do 3 times 3. And if we do this, well, here's what we get. We get 3 times 2, and then we add 3 times 3 to this. And what's our result? Well, we get 6 plus 9, and oh, there we go, that's 15. So you can either do the brackets first, or you can distribute these things out. If, you're just if you just have numbers on their own, it's easy to do the brackets first. But when you have variables involved, it's often easier to distribute first and get a general formula for whatever variable you're using. So let's try this. I have 2y times 3 plus 6. So using the distributive method, I can distribute 2y into 3, and I can distribute 2y into 6. So I'm going to add two things. I'm going to add uh, 2y times 3 to 2y times 6. And remember, if we don't have anything between a variable, a number, and another bracket, there's just a hidden multiplication symbol there. In fact, I think maybe if I change the color of this, it also becomes a little bit more clear exactly what's happening here. So the addition, again, is still remaining the same between the two terms, but we're just distributing this 2y into the two different things inside the bracket. And it doesn't matter how many things are inside the bracket. So if we have three things we're adding together, we can do distribution all the same. So let me actually just sneak in that multiplication sign. So I'll put a little dot there. And what I'll do for this example too is I'm just going to change the addition sign to be the color green so we can see exactly how this works. So what's going to happen is I'm going to distribute 7x into 4, I'm going to distribute 7x to 3, and I'm going to distribute 7x into 6 times q. So what I'll end up with is I'm going to have 7x times 4, and then I'm going to add to it 7x times 3, since I'm distributing it to the 3, and then I'm going to add the last one to it, which is going to be 7x times 6q. And that's going to be our end result. So as you can see, we're distributing the 7x, we're multiplying it by each of these numbers here, and then we're adding these all together. So this is just the same as this previous example we did on the right, but instead of using only numbers, we're also using variables. Okay, so that's distributivity. So you're distributing the multiplication over the addition. Now we have two more to talk about. One is the identity. And what the identity means is whatever number you put in, you can add it or you can multiply it by the identity number, whatever that is for the specific operator, and you get that same number back. So if you put an A and you add something, you get A back. If you put A in and you multiply it by something, you get A back. So each of the operators, addition and multiplication, have a different identity. For addition, that identity is zero. So three plus zero gives us three back. It gives us the same thing back. It gives us that back, that identity. With any number B, so B is just a variable here. If we add zero to it, we always get B back. So the identity for the plus operator is zero. Now, what about multiplication? What is the identity for a multiplication? Well, if we take four and we multiply it by something, how do we get four back? Well, we just multiply that by one. Four times one is equal to four. What about some number C? This can be any number in the world. Well, we take C, we multiply it by one, and that gives us C back. So the identity for the multiplication is one. So we can see the difference between the plus and the multiplication identities, they differ. But it's important to remember, there's only one identity for addition, and there's only one identity for multiplication. So you can never have two different identities in whatever system you're working with. Now the last one is the inverse. Now what the inverse does is the inverse 
takes a number and you either add or multiply it by an inverse. And what you get is the identity. So if you take a number, you add or multiply it by its inverse, you should get the identity back. Now what this means is that when we have, for instance, the identity for plus and the identity for the multiplication, we know what those are. The identity for addition is zero. The identity for multiplication is one. We just covered that. So now we want to find the inverse of each of these. We want to find the inverse of multiplication and inverse of addition. So let's do some examples. If I have three, what do I add to the in to, to three to get zero back. Well, in this particular case, I need to subtract three. I need to add negative three to it. So if I have three and I add negative three, I get zero back. What about any number a? Any number a. If I take a, I just need to add the negative of a to it. So I add negative a. So a minus a is equal to zero. That's for any number in the world. So the inverse or addition is just the negative of whatever number we're looking at. What about multiplication? How do we do this? Well, if I have four, what can I multiply it by to get one? Well, if I have four things, I just need to take a fourth of those things to get one. So if I have four, I multiply it by one over four, and that gives me one. So you can think of this being like the fours cancel and we're left with one. So with that in mind, what would we do for c? And remember, c is just any arbitrary number. Well, we want to do the cancellation, right, to get 1 in the end. So we'll multiply this by 1 over c. So that way, whatever c is, these things will cancel, and we'll get 1 back. So if we have some number a for addition, the inverse is going to be negative a, whatever that number is. If we have some number c for multiplication, the inverse for multiplication is going to be one over c. So that'll cancel it out and give us one in the end. So it's called the inverse, especially with multiplication. You can see how the number is inverted, c to one over c. With addition, maybe that casual uh, meaning of inverse isn't entirely clear, but the inverse is just something that gives us the identity back. So for addition, it's zero. For multiplication, we want one back. Now, there's subtraction and division. And subtraction and division don't work with these properties like addition and multiplication do. And that's because subtraction and division are actually abbreviations of addition and multiplication with uh, different operations here. So a minus b is actually the same thing as a plus negative b. So you just add the negative number. But if we change the order of this, so if we do b minus a, this comes out differently. This would be b plus negative a. And these two things are not the same. So a minus b is not the same as b minus a. So properties like commutativity, associativity, they're not going to work with subtraction. What about division? Well, division is really just multiplication of a number's reciprocal. And a reciprocal just means that when you take a number such as two thirds, the reciprocal of it is just flipping the numerator and the denominator. So the reciprocal of this is three over two. So if I take a divided by b, I, I can rewrite this. I can say this is a over b. Or I can say this is also the same thing as a times one over b. Okay, so in terms of multiplication, here we go. That's our multiplication. So a divided by b is just the same thing as a times one over b. So when you're dividing by b, what you're really doing is you're multiplying by the reciprocal of b, which is one over b. So with uh, commutativity, if I just clear some things up over on the right, if I take a look at this, if I do 3 divided by 4, okay, in fact I'm going to write it out just like we did before. If I do 3 divided by 4, this is not the same thing as 4 divided by 3. So 3 fourths 
is the same thing as 3 times 1 over 4, and 4 thirds is the same thing as 4 times 1 over 3. So division is also not commutative, it's not associative. So these are just some different definitions and properties of real numbers. You don't have to memorize the names, it's not something that you typically do in a college algebra class, but it is a good idea to be familiar with these names so that way when you encounter other uh, areas of math that you know what those mean and you're able to quickly pick up whether or not you can flip the order you add things or the order that you do your operations in. So at this point you should be able to do these three exercises and tell me which laws and which things and which names, which properties are being used to show that these are equivalent. And there will be a solution video within 12 hours, so if you want the answers, check that out.